Number 5. The Manson Blood Painting Charles Manson was the infamous cult leader who formed a group of mostly young women, teaching them that they were the reincarnations of the original Christians and that he was Jesus Christ. Manson began using his followers for extortion, taking a music teacher who they believed had inherited a large fortune hostage in his home and demanding that he join the cult and turn over the money. The man maintained that they were mistaken and Manson attacked him with a sword before having one of his followers finish the job. In the cult's most famous incident, Manson sent four family members to the home of Hollywood actress Sharon Tate with instructions for them to end the lives of Tate and the four guests who were staying with her. The next night, these family members were joined by three others and brought by Manson to the home of Leno and Rosemary LaBianca, where they broke in and tied up the two residents at Manson's instructions. He then ordered them to dispatch the victims and left. Although it hasn't been conclusively proven, the Manson family are believed to be responsible for at least 15 other deaths, with Manson himself claiming at one point that he was responsible for 35 total deaths. Manson was apprehended and remained in prison until his execution in 2017. Even while in custody, he maintained a dedicated group of admirers, and after his death, his ashes were scattered at his funeral and an admiring artist gathered some of them up. The artist, Ryan Almighty, then used their own blood in order to paint a picture of the cult leader using Manson's real ashes to fill in the eyes on the portrait. Many people who see the painting report it having a charged feeling, and many people refuse to look into the eyes of the Manson painting out of fear for what could happen. It doesn't have too much of a reputation for being haunted, but come on. If ever there was a painting that was begging to be haunted or cursed, it would be the one made with the actual human remains of Charles Manson. This painting should be destroyed or locked away in the Warrens Museum just to be safe. Why wait until more creepy activity is linked to this disturbing painting? Number 4. The Hanging Man this haunted painting is actually linked to a haunted photograph, making it twice as haunted as some of the art on this list. It all started when a photographer named James Kidd took a seemingly innocuous photo of a wooden cart next to a barn. Kidd thought nothing of it until he had the photo developed and saw a ghostly figure had made its way into the frame. On the left side of the cart, he could see a headless and hanging man. He showed the photo to others who searched for any sign of doctoring, but could find none. It was then that this painting caught the attention of a painter named Laura P. Laura claims that she felt drawn to the image and decided that she had to make an oil painting based on the photograph. While painting the picture, she reported feeling deeply uneasy, but she pushed through to finish her art. The painting was hung at a local business, but was soon taken down after it reportedly began moving on its own and caused several important papers to go missing. Laura then put the painting up in her own home. She soon began to experience strange occurrences. These included objects being knocked over or broken, mysterious knocking on the doors, strange leaks, and perhaps most disturbing, the apparition of the headless man in her home. Once word of the haunted painting got out, she received several offers from collectors to buy the painting. She has so far refused, claiming that she is afraid of what the painting could do in the homes of others. If this is truly the only thing preventing her from getting rid of this painting, which is apparently causing her to see headless ghosts, perhaps the right move is to give the painting to the Warren Museum, who, if nothing else, would know what they are signing up for and could take it off of her hands. In at number three, we have Man Proposes, God Disposes. The 1800 paintings by Sir Edwin Landseer could be one of the most mysterious and haunting one there is. The painting shows two polar bears savagely attacking human remains. The painting was to depict the mysterious and terrifying tales of Sir John Franklin's failed expedition to find the Northwest Passage. Finding the passage was very important in the eyes of British merchants and sailors in the 19th century because it would link the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, and cut the length of the trip and inevitably strengthen British imperial power. Franklin was a very experienced explorer and set off on his expedition with 129 men and two navy ships, but after three years there were no word from him. There were countless searches and missions to try and find the missing crew and ships. During one mission in 1854, they spoke to the local Inuit community, who met with some of the remaining crew after they had to abandon their ship. 
And after 10 years, the only thing they could find were objects from the expedition, including Franklin's telescope seen in the painting. Most gruesome, however, was their discovery of bones belonging to members of the crew. This mysterious disappearance of the crew and their failed expedition is not only the haunting part about the painting, though. As the picture is displayed at Royal Holloway University of London, where it has to be covered with a Union flag during exam season. This is due to the fact that in the 1970s there was a rumor of a student taking their own life after staring at the painting for too long. The student allegedly left a note behind saying the polar bears made me do it, while other students reported feeling uneasy and upset while sitting next to it. In at number 2 we have Pogo the Clown. During the early 1970s John Wayne Gacy was considered a loving husband and a successful restaurant manager. He was seen as an active and important community member as he would dress up as a clown at events to raise money for local charities. His clown alter ego was called Pogo the Clown, where many sick kids in local hospitals would receive visits from Pogo. John was seen as a normal and kind man until the truth about his alter ego came to the surface. Under the floorboards of his house there were discovered remains of people he took the life of. After John was exposed for his criminal behaviour, he was convicted and imprisoned on death row. In prison, John began to oil paint. When people would view his painting, they would feel a mix of repulsion and intrigue. One piece in particular is known to fully represent John's murderous instinct, called Pogo the Clown. In 2001, the painting would be purchased by singer Nicky Stone for $3,000. Shortly after purchasing the painting, Nicky noticed a string of accidents and tragedies following him, this being his dog suddenly passing away and then his mother falling sick. Alarmed with the sudden bad news, he arranged to have the painting stored at a friend's house instead. While it was in the hands of the friend, a close neighbour passed in a car accident. The painting would be later handed over to another friend until the eeriness of the painting would haunt the man until he went mad. Stone, the original owner of the painting, had no choice but to sell it for all of the negative energy that it brought to each person that it was handed over to. Finally, coming in at number one, we have Untitled by Zdzislaw Beczynski. One of the most visually frightening paintings on this list, we have the Zdzislaw Beskinski, untitled painting that looks like a scene straight out of a nightmare. Not only does it look terrifying, but the legend surrounding the painting is also not for the faint hearted. Many people believe that the painting is cursed. The Polish painter did not title any of his paintings because he wanted to avoid any metaphorical interpretation of his paintings. He also reportedly burned a selection of his artworks in his backyard before anyone could ever see them. As an artist, Beskinski was fascinated with death, decay, and darkness. But those weren't his only fascinations. Therefore, his work had dark, decaying, and gruesome images. But Skinsky's life was filled with tragedy after his wife suddenly passed, and just a year later, his sudden would follow. Six years after these horrible accidents, the artist himself was found unalive in his apartment. Understandably, his tragic last year have since often been linked with the grimness of his art because of all of the death and bad luck that followed the artist's painting. It's believed that anyone that looked at the painting for too long would soon be met with the same fate as Beskinsky's family. At number five, we have titled painting by Zdzislaw Betsinski. This is a solid place to start. The backstory on this painting, as well as all of the other pieces by this Polish painter, have quite a dark history. Now, you probably don't know which painting I'm talking about because this artist didn't title any of the paintings that he made, so let's take a look at this piece before we dive any deeper into this. Okay, right off the bat, you can see how someone could see something in this moving. There's so many layers to the imagery and almost feels like a living, breathing representation of a tortured soul, which is exactly exactly what Bensitsky was, a troubled artist with heartbreak after heartbreak, first having his wife die, and then with his son not being able to handle the tragedy of losing his mother, his son took his own life. Beksinski was now alone and this forced solitude along with the loss of his family came through his work. The surrealist art became more bleak and this is when rumors of his work being haunted started to swirl. The final layer of gossip surrounding the artist would be set six years after his son's shocking suicide. Beksinski was murdered. Now it would seem that all the dark stories that were told about the artist are coming true. People have claimed to see the faces in this artist's paintings twisting and crying out for help. It's also said that if you look at this painting for too long, then your death will come swiftly. I don't know what the timer is on it. We've all been looking at this painting for a little bit of time now. I'm not sure it's been long enough. And just if you're worried at home, know that I've been looking at it longer than you have. So keep your eyes on the obituaries. And if you see my name, then near might be next on the list. Yeah, sorry. At number four, we have The Hand 
Germans resist him. This painting was completed in 1974, but it wasn't until the year 2000 when it really blew up. The original message of the painting was actually something quite cute. The boy in the painting is supposed to be the artist Bill Stoneham, young with his whole future ahead of him. An endless world of possibilities could be presented to the child. The hands all over the window door, even though they look like ghostly prints of someone from the other side, they are actually meant to be each one of those paths that this boy could take. And that creepy, lifeless doll that stands next to the juvenile representative representation of our creator, that is the captain of his journey, the one who will show the boy what is waiting for him down each one of these possible avenues. Really the painting represents imagination and possibility, but in the year 2000 that would change. The painting was posted on eBay with a tagline talking about how the painted was cursed and haunted. Since then people made all sorts of claims about the painting, saying that there are spirits that are attached to it. The most famous being that the hands in the window will constantly move. If you stare at the painting at night, you can see them shift and sometimes even reach out of the painting. In at number 3 we have Crying Boy. The Crying Boy was originally created by Italian painter Giovanni Bragolin in the 1950s and has been mass produced in alternative versions over the years, all portraits of tearful young boys or girls. In addition to being widely known, certain urban legends attribute a curse to the painting. One major reason for these claims come from a fire that happened in South Yorkshire, England in 1980. The owners of the home, Ron and May Hall, lost nearly everything to the blaze except one item, a painting of the crying boy. His wide eyes looking out from the wreckage are not even blackened by the smoke. In September of 1985, British tabloid The Sun published a story about the crying boy painting that caused fires and this story was backed up by a local fire station officer. The officer said these paintings turned up mysteriously unscathed in fires across the UK, all of which started spontaneously. After the story came out, many people got rid of the painting from their home, while others shrugged off the rumours and kept them hung in their homes. These paintings were readily available in stores during the 1950s to 1970s, so many people had one. They appealed to many young couples who wanted to decorate their homes with art. The paintings bear the prominent signature of one Giovanni Brogolin, but for quite some time no one could find information on this mysterious artist and why he paints sad children. One backstory from 2000 was about the boy in the famous crying boy painting, who was said to be a street urchin named Don Bonillo, who accidentally started a fire in which his parents died in Spain. From then on, whenever the boy went, a fire followed, giving him the nickname Diablo. Many people throughout England who had owned these paintings had unfortunate events happen to them, often involving fire. The son who did the original story of the cursed painting told the public to send them their paintings and they will set fire to them and get rid of the curse, and they did just that. They put out an article on Halloween in 1985 with the headline Crying Flame, claiming they dissolved the curse once and for all with a bonfire, burning stacks of these paintings which were all sent in by the public. The bonfire blazed near the River Thames, dissolving the curse into smoke. In at number 2 we have The Hands Resist Him. The Hands Resist Him was created by artist Bill Stoneham in 1972. It shows a young boy and a female doll standing in front of a glass panel door, against which many hands are pressed. According to Bill, the boy is based on a photograph of himself at the age of 5. The doorway is a representation of the dividing line between the current world and the world of fantasy and impossibilities, while the doll is a guide that will escort the boy through it. The hands represent alternative lives or possibilities. This painting became the subject of an urban legend and a viral internet meme in February 2000 when it was posted for sale on eBay, along with a description implying that it was haunted. The painting was first displayed at the Feingarten Gallery in Beverly Hills, California, and was even reviewed by an art critic at the Los Angeles Times. According to Bill, the owner of the gallery and the art critic who reviewed the painting died within one year of coming into contact with it. During the show, the painting was purchased by actor John Marley, who had a notable role in the movie The Godfather. After Marley's death, the painting was found at the site of an old brewery by an elderly California couple who kept it until auctioning it on eBay in February 2000. According to the couple, the painting carried some form of a curse. They claimed that the characters in the painting moved during the night and that they would sometimes leave the painting and another room, and the painting had made its way to that room they had just entered. The couple the couple also included a series of photographs they had taken, said to be evidence of an incident in which the female doll character threatened the male character with a 
and that she was holding, causing him to attempt to leave the painting. A disclaimer was included in the listing absolving the seller from all liability if the painting was purchased. News of the listing ran rapid through the internet, catching lots of attention and the auction page was viewed over 30,000 times. Some people who had seen the photo of the painting claimed that it made them feel ill or have an unpleasant experience. After initial bid of $199, the painting eventually received 30 bids and sold for $1,025. The buyer of this cursed painting was the Perception Gallery in Grand Rapid, Michigan. An individual who saw the story of the Hands Resistant painting contacted Bill Stoneham in 2004 about commissioning a sequel. Bill agreed and actually went on to make three more paintings that related to the original, creating a series. On March 15, 2017, the Haunted Museum in Las Vegas announced it had acquired the prequel painting. Bill Stoneham finished the series with his final painting, What Remains, in 2021. And finally, in at number one, we have The Anguished Man. The Anguished Man is probably one of the most famous cursed paintings of all time. This oil painting is known to be the world's most haunted, not only paintings in the world, but objects next to the Annabelle doll and the Dybbuk box. This famous painting was created by an unknown artist who mixed the paint with his own blood. The artist was very troubled and soon after finishing the painting, he took his own life. The Anguished Man is currently owned by Sean Robinson from Cumbria, England. He inherited the painting from his grandmother who warned him that the painting was cursed. Despite what his grandmother said, the painting fascinated him. So he did take it, but he had to keep it in the basement of his house because his wife didn't like it. In 2010, Sean removed the painting from the basement after a flooding happened and put it in one of the bedrooms of the home. Shortly after moving the painting, Sean and his family started to experience strange happenings around the house, like seeing a shadowy figure of a man and hearing sounds of whispering and crying. The incidents kept happening, haunting each member of the family. At night time, Sean would suddenly awake to see a dark, faceless figure standing in his bedroom, and his wife discovered a stranger lying on the bed next to her, leaving her traumatized. The occurrence became dangerous when the couple's son, Keenan, felt a presence push him down the stairs. In 2011, Sean uploaded a video on YouTube titled Ghost Activity Caught on Tape, Haunted Painting, The Anguished Man, which had gained over 1 million views. The video was recorded for eight consecutive hours in the bedroom where the painting hung. The video contains footage of the door closing on its own, a loud bang, and sounds of scraping can be heard. Sean continued uploading videos, posting updates about the painting and capturing further paranormal activity in the house, such as distorted sounds and a mysterious ghostly figure running past the camera. To this day, Sean still owns the cursed painting and refuses to destroy it. He keeps it in his basement to avoid any more harm to him and his family. He is currently planning on bringing his story and experiences to the big screen to make a film about the anguished man. Coming in at number five, we have The Dead Mother. The Dead Mother by Edvard Munch was painted in 1900. Edvard was known for his dark inspiration within his paintings. Having lived a tragic life, he often took from his experiences when creating his art. Munch had been driven nearly insane by his upbringing in the house of an angry religious fanatic of a father after the tragic death of his mother and sister by tuberculosis when he was only five years old. The dead mother seems to reflect some of that angst, despair, and insanity, with these elements congealing to form what can only be described as a truly disturbing painting to look at. It depicts a young girl with her back turned to a bed on which her dead mother lies as she holds her hands to her ears and displays a wide-eyed expression of disbelief. Already creepy enough, but it gets even creepier. People who have owned the painting claim that the girl's eyes incessantly followed them, that the sheets on the mother's bed and the painting would rustle or move, or even that the girl's apparition would occasionally leave the painting altogether. Some people have felt a sinking feeling after just looking at the painting or screaming uncontrollably. After being moved from owner to owner due to hauntings, it is now held safely at the Galleria de Art de Bremen in Germany. Being kept at a safe distance might keep the hauntings to a minimum, or maybe it can now haunt hundreds of people a day. Would you be brave enough to look in the little girl's eyes? You might catch her leaving the frame or maybe something worse. I think it would be best to stay clear just to be safe. Coming in at number four, we have The Crying Boy. Before we get into the second one, you might want to check you don't already have one of these paintings in your home. The Spanish artist named Giovanni Bragolini created over 60 of the original Crying Boy paintings. He sold those paintings to tourists as a reminder of the orphans of World War II. Oddly enough, people in England, especially young couples, grew fond of these paintings. They started to create replicas replicas of the paintings at mass to be sold all over England. One September morning in 1985, British residents opened their copies of The Sun, a popular newspaper, to find an astonishing article. Blazing curse of the crying boy, read the headline. The article read that the couple's home burned to the ground and they lost everything. Only
only one item did not burn and that was the crying boy painting. The fireman related to the case also stated that this was not the first time this has happened. There had already been a number of fires but the only thing remaining was the crying boy. The response to the article was overwhelming. Within a day hundreds of readers had reached out to the newspaper claiming to be jinxed by the painting. After the story was published people were seized with hysteria. The legend grew bigger as imaginations ran wild. Some people claimed that the painting had caused the death of family members. Others reported that when they tried to burn the prints the painting would not catch on fire. Even restaurants with crying boy prints were burned to the ground. Firefighter Alan Wilkinson admitted that he had noted more than 50 crying boy fires since 1973. There have been stories told about who the crying boy is. The most popular is that the boy in the painting was an orphan living in Madrid. Despite a priest warning that fires broke out wherever the boy went, the artist decided to adopt the child. Some time later, the artist studio burned down. The little boy ran away, never to be seen again. As these paintings were created in mass, there are still a number of them around. You might see them in older build houses, restaurants, or even hotels. But if you ever see one, please do not take it home, as the curse may consume everything you own. Number three, the John Wayne Gacy clown paintings. John Wayne Gacy was the notorious serial murderer operating out of Chicago from the late 60s until the late 70s. He would lure victims into his home with the promise of illicit substances. He would then trick the young men into putting on a pair of handcuffs, claiming that he was going to demonstrate a magic trick. He would then force himself on them, hurt them for his own amusement, and then finally asphyxiate them before hiding their remains in his crawl space. In the 11 years that he operated, he was responsible for the deaths of over 33 people, for he was arrested on December 21st, 1978, and sentenced to execution by lethal injection. Gacy had appeared for years to be the perfect family man, being an active member of his community, and in a detail that the media became obsessed with, volunteering as a clown who would perform at parades, fundraisers, and children's hospitals. This was unrelated to his crimes, was such an odd detail that the press dubbed him the Killer Clown. This apparently served as the inspiration for Stephen King's It, and since then, clowns just haven't been able to catch a break. While awaiting his fate on death row, Gacy took up painting, creating several portraits of himself dressed as Pogo the Clown. He is believed to have created over 2,000 paintings in prison before his death in 1994. After this, his attorney auctioned the paintings off, with several of them being purchased and burned in a bonfire attended by the the families of his victims. Of course, this just made the paintings that remained more valuable and rare, and they have been known to show up in auctions where they are purchased for tens of thousands of dollars by people with questionable morals and taste. Some of these collectors came to regret their purchase of the Gacy clown paintings, with some claiming to experience vivid nightmares and visions of Gacy's crimes and victims sitting at the foot of their beds after having looked at the paintings for too long. If such claims are genuine, then perhaps it would be better to take these disturbing paintings and have them locked in the deepest, darkest corner of the Warrens Museum, to prevent them from doing any harm to the people who come across them. Number 2. The Anguished Man the tale of this rather disturbing looking painting is strange and steeped in mystery. Every scant piece of information we have on it is more unsettling than the last. The painting of a featureless man who seems to be screaming was apparently painted by a deeply troubled artist who mixed his own blood with the paints in an effort to get the right shade of red. Not long after completing it, the artist took his own life, and the painting found its way into a woman's care. She kept it for many years, but claimed that once she put the painting up, her and her family began to see a dark, shadowy figure roaming about the house. At night, they would hear strange sounds like footsteps and crying. The woman took the painting down and kept it locked in her attic for 25 years until she died, leaving the painting to its current caretaker, Sean Robinson. Sean had been warned by his grandmother that the painting was haunted, but he thought little of it. Robinson kept the painting in his basement for about a decade before rediscovering it and putting it up. Once again, the family began seeing the dark shadowy figure roaming the halls and hearing the sounds of weeping and moaning during the night. Sean began leaving a camera on by the painting to try and get evidence of its paranormal nature, and upon reviewing the footage, heard some odd noises and saw evidence of doors opening and closing, seemingly by themselves, and the painting falling over onto the ground. 
involved. As time went on, the activity became more and more intense, with his wife seeing a strange mist and an unseen force pushing his son down the stairs. Things went from bad to worse when guests who came to see the painting began reporting intense and sudden nosebleeds. Sean takes the painting out from time to time to show it to paranormal investigators and television programs who want to hear his story. But otherwise, the anguished man is apparently kept locked away in a safe location to prevent any further harm from coming to unwitting people. As much as this might be the right move, someone like Sean, with very limited knowledge of the paranormal, might not be the right person to take care of such a dangerous piece of art, and it might be safer for him and everyone else if it were handed over to people with more experience dealing with cursed and dangerous artifacts, such as the people who run the Warren's Occult Museum. Who knows, perhaps the painting would prefer it, and would start up a friendly relationship with the Annabelle doll, and the two would become less evil as they have each finally found a true bosom buddy. Or maybe it would just make things worse. The point is, we will never know for sure unless we try. Number 1. The Hands Resist Him This painting, featuring a sad-looking young boy and a creepy creepy doll-like girl standing in front of a window, separating them from a series of hands emerging from the darkness, was created by an artist named Bill Stoneham in 1972. It was hung in a gallery. Both the owner of the gallery and the first critic to ever review the painting both died suddenly within a year of looking at the painting. The artist then took possession of the painting, but claimed that the two children in the painting would sometimes move, leaving the frame, and on one occasion, coming out of the painting itself into the real world. The artist put the painting on eBay, telling its stories, and many people who simply looked at the listing claimed to experience odd happenings, such as hearing voices or chills, or becoming ill. The painting sold for a little over a thousand dollars, but if it is really so powerful, perhaps it should be taken to the occult museum, where the harm it can do can be limited as much as possible. In fifth place, we have Ed's paintings. So long before they were famed ghost hunters investigating enough the Amityville horror and featured in films such as The Conjuring, Ed and Lorraine had a much different hobby. Painting. Actually, it was how the duo made a living. Ed Warren was a trained fine arts painter. The duo traveled all over the country to sell their paintings, and they also taught art classes. The couple used Ed's paintings as a way to gain entry into houses they wanted to investigate. They would research houses they believed to be haunted, and then drive to the house. After Ed painted the house in question, he would then hand the painting to Lorraine, who would go up, knock on the door, and offer the homeowners a painting, which would usually turn into a conversation about the property and the hauntings. This process was how their investigative career began. Ed became known for his barn door art, painting tranquil winter scenes on stained pine, which was all the range for adorning the wood grain halls of any home in the late 60s, and apparently these paintings are now quite rare. Many of his paintings that have been photographed feature different haunted houses, and examples of his art and calligraphy style are displayed throughout the museum. In fourth place, we have Black Magic Masks. These fall under the practice of tulpa, which is a concept in theosophy, mysticism, and the paranormal of a materialized thought form, typically in human form, such as an imaginary friend or being that is created through spiritual practice and intense concentration. In simpler English, the masks act as a representation of the practice, which is a form of mysticism that involves creating sentient and autonomous beings separate from oneself. So. An imaginary friend? The concept of tulpas and their creation, including the word tulpa, come from a close in Tibetan Buddhist practice, with tulpa being a Tibetan word for creature of the mind. Tulpas did not become part of Western paranormal lore until the 1970s, and those who practice have been cited as wearing masks similar to Halloween ones in order to take on the appearance of whatever the mask looks like. I guess that explains why I've seen many cheap looking Halloween masks in the video walkthroughs from the museum, so I suppose I'll retract my statements that I made about how pathetic they look. If anyone is curious about modern practices and appropriations of tulpamancers. The interweb origins can be traced back to 4chan message boards in 2009, and no, if you don't know what that means, I'm not going to elaborate on just how cursed that sentence was to utter. Oh, it gets worse. All right. The communities gained popularity when adult fans of My Little Pony started discussing tulpas of characters from the Friendship is Magic television series. The fans attempted to use meditation and lucid dreaming techniques to create Imaginary friends. Look, I knew someone back in high school who fell under that subculture, and he was the furthest thing from mentally stable. The guy had uh, 
people munching fantasies as well. Uh, time to move on before I get nightmares again. In at number 3, The Stagecraft or The Hanging Man. In 1994, James Kidd, a commercial photographer, placed one of his photos on display at a gallery in Tombstone, Arizona, where Laura P was showing some of her oil paintings. The photo was the old stagecoach stop at Tombstone. He first took a photo of the stagecoach stop and an old stagecoach, and then he wound his camera so he could get a double exposure photo with another old wagon in the foreground. When the picture was developed, however, it revealed something unexpected. Standing on a log to the left of the wagon is a figure that the photographer did not see when he took the picture. Upon close inspection, the figure appears to be a headless man. The figure's coat, pants and boots are quite plain and easy to see, but he has no head. The photographer says the photo has been examined by Kodak and other experts to prove that he did not doctor it in any way. Laura couldn't get over the photo and asked him if she could do an oil painting of it. He agreed that she could. Back home in Sierra Vista, Arizona, she began to work on a 16 by 20 inch oil painting based on the photo. When she was about halfway through completing the painting, she started getting a strange feeling. She began to ask herself, why on earth did she want to paint this picture? And maybe she should never have started it. But she did finish it, and then some very strange, unexplained things began to happen around her home, seemingly centered around that painting. The haunting first started when she took the framed painting with some others for a display in a business location. She hung the ghost painting on the wall behind an office desk. Three days later, people from the office called and asked her to come pick up the ghost painting. Every morning they claimed the painting was crooked. They would straighten it and the next morning it would be crooked again. Also appointments were inexplicably messed up and papers went missing. They were actually afraid of it. She took the painting back. Since then a number of hauntings have followed the painting where it went. There have been many people including Laura herself who claimed they did not believe in ghosts whose minds were changed by the painting. The girls at her local beauty shop wanted her to bring in the pictures of the painting she had done as she keeps a collection. One woman started brand bragging that she did not believe in ghosts and that it was silly of them to avoid touching the picture. Just let me see, she said. She took the photo, looked at it closely and just laughed. That night at her house, a clock that had been on the wall for 40 years fell down and broke into a hundred pieces. Laura has said, I quote, I still don't actually believe in ghosts. Yet yeah, if I had to do it over, I would not have created this painting. She still has the painting hanging in her home. She said she had multiple offers for the painting, but she is too afraid to sell it to anyone and she would feel responsible for what might happen to them. In at number 2 we have Love Letters Replica. The Love Letters painting is dubbed one of the most haunted paintings in the world and is most known for its history connected to the Austin's Driscoll Hotel. A US senator lost his 4 year old daughter Samantha Houston after she chased her ball down the grand stairs and tripped and fell to her death. People think that this painting was then hung up on the 5th floor of the hotel as a tribute to her. The truth is this isn't Samantha at all. This painting was a modern day replica by Richard King of a work entitled Love Letters actually painted by Charles Trevor Garland. It is quite possible that the painting may have been bought because the little girl in the picture looked like Samantha, but it most certainly isn't her at all. When this picture was hung up on the fifth floor of the hotel, people were reported feeling dizzy around the painting, nauseous and having strange sensations like being lifted off the ground. Others have said that the girl in the painting has tried to communicate with them and her expression changes. The weird thing about this haunting is that this is not the original painting of Samantha, but no one knows where the original is. Could her spirit have chosen to attach itself to this painting anyway? Or is there another spirit attached that everyone has assumed is Samantha? And finally in at number 1 we have The Rain Woman. Having completed the painting in a mere 5 hours, the artist Svetlana Telitz revealed a hand was guiding her. The painting was completed in 1996. The first purchaser was a lonely businesswoman. She hung it up on the wall in her bedroom and after 2 weeks Svetlana got a call late at night from the lady stating, please take it back, I can't sleep, it feels like there is someone else in my apartment beside me. I even took it off the wall and hid it behind a cupboard, but I still I have this feeling. The second purchaser, a young man, bought this painting. He too couldn't stand it. He brought it back to the artist without even taking his money back. He said he kept dreaming of it and he complained that every night there was a shadow of the woman walking around. He stated that it was sending him mad and he was extremely afraid of it. The third was a male. He was completely skeptical and didn't believe what was rumored to be happening with it at all, but he quickly returned it when he started to see the lady in the paintings, white eyes everywhere he went. He also claimed to have an intense headache while being in the room with it. Many believe the painting is evil and is cursed, but the artist herself disagrees and has optimized views on it. She stated, I'm sure that every picture is born for some particular person. I believe that for my woman, there is also a person. I understand that many of you don't need this grief in your eyes. It's just not an interior decoration. 
decoration. I'm sure there is someone who looks for it as it looks for that someone. She believes that the painting will not haunt the right person, that is simply waiting for that person to buy it. The Rain Woman is now on show at the Tate Modern in London. As no one now sleeps near the painting, the public appear to be safe from the hauntings. But in the future, it may once again hang in someone's home. The Rain Woman may roam again. At number five, we have the portrait of Samantha King by Richard King. A ghostly backstory is what every good haunted painting needs. Sometimes this will come way of Reddit, some will find a picture and then write some story about it or something. Or sometimes it'll be someone online claiming that a painting is haunting their dreams for no reason at all, but the best ones are connected to death in some way. Now this painting was done by Richard King, and most people think that the painting is of his daughter Samantha, which is actually not true. It's actually a replica of the famous painting titled Love Letters. But here's why people think that the painting is of his daughter. It's because it feels into this amazing ghost story. The painting now hangs in the Driscoll Hotel in Austin, Texas. It was this very hotel where the young girl Samantha King was playing. It said that she was playing right in front of where the painting is hanging. She was bouncing a ball off of one of the walls in the hallway and then it rolled away from her and went down the stairs. She went running after her ball and she lost her footing and then fell down the stairs and died. This was national news because Richard King was a US Senator at the time of this tragic event. After everything settled down, people reported hearing strange things around the painting. Some say that they could hear a girl laughing as they walked by it. Other people said that standing near the painting made them feel faint, like they were going to fall over or even vomit. The scariest stories are that if you look into the painting for an extended period of time, the face will start to twist its shape and contort into something more terrifying. Now I have no idea if any of these stories are true and the fact that the painting isn't actually of the young girl kind of takes away from it, but it seems that people have almost willed this ghost into existence. At number four, we have the Anguished Man. Something that is really perfect in horror is mystery. That's honestly my favorite part about anything that uses horror as its medium for a story. A good horror will have so much unknown, and the whole time you're watching it or reading it or whatever, you're thinking to yourself, what the hell is going on? I need answers, but you really don't want the answers because that will ruin exactly what's going on for you and that's what's happening with this painting here. The Anguish Man is made by an unknown artist and it has a laundry list of stories that go along with it and it makes sense why. Just look at this piece. It has elements of the scream and there's something about the lack of features that just makes it even more chilling. It's just a total expression of pain and dread. It looks like he's looking into something so horrific that this is the only expression he can make. Something so terrifying that noise does even escape his mouth. Now what makes this piece even more creepy is the fact that people say it might have been made using human blood and there are several layers to this. Some people say that it might have been the artist who used his own blood and other people say the artist was some sort of serial killer who would torture his victims by slowly draining their blood and then using that blood to make his paintings. But in the end no one really knows and as I said before it makes this painting so much more frightening. Coming in at number three with untitled nightmarish painting. Zdzisław Bukinski was a Polish painter who never titled any of his works. All of his work was considered to be dark. His paintings often depict anxiety such as torn doll faces or faces erased or obscured by bandages wrapped around the portrait. His main focus was on abstract painting, although it seems his works in the 1960s were inspired by surrealism. Many of his paintings might look haunted and terrifying, but only one truly is. People call this painting Untitled Nightmarish Painting. He painted this while in a state of a pure anguish after Bukinski's wife Sophia died in 1998. He created this just after she died and it was left in his studio. A year later on Christmas Eve 1999, his son Thomas took his own life through medicine overdose. It is said that Thomas was driven mad by the painting and could not take it anymore. The painting whispered to him to carry out horrific acts and he finally gave in. A few years later in February 2005, Bukinski was brutally attacked in his own home by a young man demanding that he give him money. He did not survive the attack. It is thought that from the moment he finished this painting, he and his family were cursed. This curse now follows anyone who lays their eyes on it. As all of his paintings have no name, there is no way to know where this painting currently resides. If you do get a chance to own or gaze upon the painting, do so with caution. Coming in at number two, we have The Anguished Man by Unknown. The Anguished Man, an oil painting, is known to be one of the most haunted objects in the world. According to legends, The Anguished Man was created by an 
unknown artist, who mixed the paint with his own blood. Shortly after his work was completed, the artist took his own life. It is currently owned by Sean Robinson from Cumbria, England. Robinson inherited the Angus man from his grandmother, who warned him that the painting was cursed. Although he was fascinated with the painting, Robinson had to keep it in the basement of his house because his wife did not like it. A few years later, his house was flooded and he was forced to move the painting into one of the bedrooms to avoid damage. Since then, Robinson and his family began experiencing strange activities around the house, such as seeing a shadowy figure of a man and hearing sounds of whispering and crying. Further incidents occurred weeks later, haunting each member of the family. At nights, Robinson would wake up to see a dark, faceless figure standing in his bedroom, and his wife discovered a stranger lying on the bed next to her, leaving her traumatized. The incident that really put the family in danger was when the couple's son Keenan felt a presence push him down the stairs. In 2011, Robinson started documenting the hauntings on his YouTube channel. One video that gained over a million views showed a recording of the painting filmed over eight hours, which shows footage of the door closing on its own while the painting is in the room. In addition to that, a loud bang and sounds of scraping can be heard in the video. Since then, Robinson uploaded more videos, posting updates about the painting and captured further paranormal activity in the house, such as its distorted sounds and a mysterious ghostly figure running past the camera. Many question why he was keeping the painting as it was posing as a clear threat to him and his family. People have long accused Robinson of faking the footage to gain attention and views. Robinson appeared in a TV documentary to tell his story and briefly mentioned about the hoax rumors, stating, I quote, A lot of people were skeptical and I can understand that because I was a skeptic myself and still am, but the footage is there for you to see. It wasn't faked. There could be a perfectly reasonable explanation, but I haven't found one yet. To this day, Robinson refuses to destroy the painting and keeps it in his basement to avoid any more harm to his family. He is currently planning on bringing his story to the big screen, as La Bria Pictures have acquired the rights to make a film about the anguished man. If he ever decided to part with the painting and sell it, this is one painting you should not consider buying. The clear hauntings are a warning to stay far away from the paintings at all time. Who knows who it might hurt next? And finally, coming in at number one, we have The Hands Resist Him by Bill Stoneham. This painting by Bill Stoneham was finished in 1974. The inspiration for the painting came from a photo taken of Bill when he was just five years old. The photograph wasn't worth a thousand words, it was worth a million nightmares. Bill grew up poor, his family did quite a bit of travelling for his father's job. The family was staying at his grandmother's apartment in Chicago to save money. The place was so small, Stoneham was forced to sleep on a mat in a closet filled with dresses, coats and hats. When he speaks about this time in his life, he says it was like not being in a room at all, it was like being in an article of clothing. Stoneham regularly played outside with one of the girls from the neighbourhood. During one of these occasions, his parents had both kids pose in front of a glass door for a photograph. They couldn't have known that two decades later, Stoneham would transform the Monday childhood photo into a terrifying painting that has become the stuff of internet legend. Looking at the original picture, it is interesting to see how he interpreted the scene. The little girl does slightly resemble that of a doll, and the young Bill does not look happy in the moment. He explained that the hands are the other lives, the glass door, that thin veil between waking and dreaming. The girl slash doll is the imagined companion or guide through this realm. He has since expanded on his collection, telling the tale of the boy and the doll throughout their story. The haunted history of the original painting dates back to 1974 when it was purchased from an art gallery. At first, nothing seemed to be wrong with the painting, but over the next few years, everyone involved with the painting since its sale had passed away. This included the actor who purchased it, the owner of the gallery who sold it, along with the art critic who had written about it. It would be another 26 years before Stoneham heard of his paintings again. Unbeknownst to him, it had been abandoned behind a California brewery turned art space. In 2000, the painting resurfaced in a listing on eBay. The family selling it wrote a horror story of a product description that reads, At the time, we wondered a little why a seemingly perfectly fine painting would be discarded like that. Today, we don't. One morning, our four-year-old daughter claimed that the children in the picture were fighting and coming into the room during the night. The father of this young girl set up a motion sensitive camera in her room to show his daughter there was nothing to be afraid of. Instead, he saw the boy crawl from the painting. The last two pictures purport to show the doll coming 
coming to life and using a weapon held in her hand to force the boy to leave the painting. These details proved to be a huge draw for buyers. The eBay listing was viewed more than 30,000 times. Some of these viewers even complained to the seller about experiencing supernatural occurrences after merely visiting the listing. By the time the painting was sold to gallery owner Kim Smith for $1,025, its legend had spread across the internet. A month after the eBay auction ended, Smith spoke with a paranormal website about life after purchasing what had become known as the haunted eBay painting. Today the painting rests in a storage pocket in Smith's gallery in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Smith recently received a low six figure offer for the painting but turned it down. So if you did want to purchase the painting, you would have to offer a large amount to even be in with a chance. Why anyone would want to offer to buy it is beyond me. In at number 5 we have the Stagecraft. This eerie painting was an adaptation of a photograph that was taken by photographer James Kidd. The photo was taken of a wooden car and when the picture was finally developed it shows a ghostly figure of a headless man standing on a log to the left of the wagon. The figure's coat, pants and boots are quite plain and easy to see but he has no head. The photograph was examined by Kodak and other experts and it was proved that this photo was not tampered with in any way. In 1994 James Kidd displayed his photo at a gallery in Tombstone, Arizona and painter Laura who was also showing off her art at the gallery saw the stagecraft photo and was very intrigued. Laura asked James if she could make an oil painting of the photo. He said she could and she began to work on the 16 by 20 inch oil painting based on the photo. When she was about halfway through completing the painting she began getting a strange feeling and Laura thought to herself why she chose that photo to paint or maybe she shouldn't have even started it but she did finish it. After completion of the painting some very strange and unexplainable things began to happen around her home seemingly centered around that painting. Laura says she doesn't believe in ghosts but she isn't able to explain how or why these strange things happened. She took the painting to hang it in the office she worked at and three days after doing that the office called and asked her to come pick up the ghost painting. Every morning people claimed the painting was crooked. They would straighten it and the next morning it would be crooked again. Also appointments were suddenly messed up and papers went missing. People in the office were very afraid of the painting so Laura took it back to her house. Since she took it home her and her husband would experience weird occurrences like knocks on the door, but no one was there. Seeing a white hazy figure of a person, a clock which hung on the wall for over 40 years suddenly fell and broke, mysterious leaks in their roof and even though it was brand new and looked at multiple times by workers who said nothing was wrong with it. Many weird things happened not only to them but also to friends of theirs who would come over or just look at the photo. Laura claims even after all of these unexplainable experiences she still doesn't believe in ghosts but if she could go back she would never have created the painting. In at number 4 we have the Rain Woman. The Rain Woman was painted in 1996 by a Ukraine artist by the name of Svetlana Teletz. One day she began to feel as if someone was always with her and one day she had the urge to draw and she believed she captured who was watching over her. During the creation of the painting she felt that a hand was guiding her during the entire process and had finished the Rain Woman in less than 5 hours. After finishing the painting it was put on the market and was bought but then quickly bought back which occurred many many times by different purchases of the Rain Woman. The first woman who bought it claimed she couldn't get any sleep and felt someone was beside her even after hiding the painting behind a cupboard. The second purchaser was a young man and he too couldn't stand to keep the painting. He brought it back to the artist without even taking his money back. The man said he kept dreaming and complained that every night there was a shadow of the woman walking around and he was extremely afraid of it. The third buyer was a male and was completely skeptical of the cursed painting but he too quickly returned it when he started to see the lady in the painting and her white eyes everywhere. He also claimed to have intense headaches while being in the room with it. It's believed that this painting is possessed by an evil spirit that has been haunting her targets and the creators since the completion of the painting. Apparently the woman infiltrates targets homes through a gallery transaction or art purchase. She takes her time to select her preferred target. She simply sits, displayed and when an appropriate target comes along they will be inexplicably drawn to the painting and compelled to purchase it. Once she is bought and brought into the home, the targets start to experience sleeplessness, nightmares, general misfortune, conflict with others living in the home, and the feeling of constantly being watched. It is unknown whether the painting is possessed or cursed, but due to so many people experiencing similar things while owning the painting, it's known around the world as one of the most haunted paintings in the world. The painting now hangs in the Venezia Salon, Merchik's furniture on the streets of Kiev. Customers who visit the shop today claim that you can catch 
the painting smiling or having a glance of anger. At number three, we have The Dead Mother by Edvard Munch. Many of you out there probably know his famous painting, The Scream. That is probably the most famous piece by Munch, and most of his artwork is in that same vein of dark and unsettling. And if you're a fan of haunted art, then you will probably know him for a completely different reason. The painting of the dead mother is supposed to be a representation of what he saw when his mother laid in her bed dead. She died from tuberculosis. That must have been a dark image to carry with you for so long, and I hope I never have to experience something like that outside of looking at his art. Now, it's not the poor mother that lays in the bed lifeless that should grab your attention but the little girl staring back at you. People claim that as you walk around the room, the girl's eyes will move and follow you no matter where you stand. If this is true, why does the girl stare at you? What is she looking for? Is she waiting for you to leave so she can be alone with her mother? Or is she looking back at you for help? Maybe she has nowhere to go and she needs someone to take care of her now. To increase the morose tone of this painting, many people believe that the girl is covering her ears because she can no longer bear to hear the rattle of her dying mother's breathing. And the dark tales to go along with this piece don't stop there. The spirit of the dead woman is said to be attached to the painting. If you stand in the same room of the painting completely silent, then you should be able to hear the rustling of her sheets and even her rattled breathing. If you're there for long enough, you'll most likely leave like the poor girl staring back at you, trapped in the painting, covering your ears in terror. And number two, we have the crying boy painting. This is a very famous painting, not so much for the detail or the skill or the look of the painting, but for all the crazy stories that follow it. The piece was created by Bruno Amato, and there are several reasons why the painting should be haunted. Could it be that Bruno tried to take advantage of someone's sadness? Could it be the anguish of the boy was so powerful that he would have found some way to spread pain no matter what? Or maybe it's simply a myth. The story goes that Bruno was walking down the streets of Italy when he saw a boy sitting in the street crying. Bruno had no clue what was causing this child's heartache, but he felt inspired by what he saw. This moment of pure grief he needed to paint. So he kept the image in his head and he went home to express his influence on the canvas. What Bruno didn't know was the reason the boy was weeping alone was because he just lost his whole family. The young boy's house burned down along with every member of his family and he was the only one to survive. Now what came of this boy? Maybe he was rescued by someone who saw him in the streets or maybe he was not so lucky and he would stay there sitting in that same spot crying until hunger, or dehydration, or exposure took him. No matter what happened to this boy, something dark was attached to this painting. The person who bought the painting off of Bruno would be held to the same fate as the poor boy. Their house would burn down. But something very haunting about this is that the painting would be the only thing left after there was only the charred remains of the house. This would happen again and again and again. It's said that if you even buy a knockoff of this painting, it will cause your home to burn down. If you're an irresponsible enough person and you want to put this cursed painting in your home, then you will know that a fire is about to come when you look into the painting and it seems as if tears are streaming down the boy's face. You'll see it and you'll think it's an illusion. You'll think your eyes are playing a trick on you. But I'll tell you that when you see this, it's a warning that either you or the painting need to get out of your house now. Probably you're gonna take out the painting because I think you wanna keep your home. I mean, that's the logical. I don't know, live your life. I'm not gonna tell you what to do. And for the number one spot, we have Man Proposes, God Disposes, Edwin Henry Landseer. There are many mysteries throughout history and outside of getting a time machine, and revisiting these places on our own to see exactly what happened, we will most likely never solve any of these mysteries. One of these great mysteries is Sir John Franklin's expedition to find the Northwest Passage. Two massive ships, the Terror and the Erebus, housing over a hundred men between the two of them, went off on a journey and never returned. Not only that, they left no sign as to what might have happened to them. Did they get stuck in the ice and starve to death? Did their boats crash and sink? Or was their fate much more gruesome than we could possibly imagine. The painting is a representation of what Edwin thinks might have happened. Stranded and devoured by polar bears, this historical piece is a bleak idea of what the outcome of the expedition could have been. And this expression of lack of hope seemed to have worked its way into the psyche of one student. It was 1973 and the Royal Holloway University of London was having exams. This painting was hung in the exam hall. One student began to look distressed. No one was very shocked by this because you're in the middle of an exam. It's normal to look distressed. Well, after the exam was finished, the student returned to their dorm and then took their own life. A note was found behind the painting that read, the polar bears made me do it. Now this stands as a rumor and people are unsure 
if this is actually true, but now during exams, a sheet is put over the painting so no one can look at it. Some say if you stare at the painting, you can see flesh drip from the polar bear's mouth and even feel the warm breath from the Arctic beast. Coming in at number five, we have Portrait of Samantha Houston. On the surface, this painting seems like a sweet portrait of a little girl, though this painting has a dark story behind it. This deceptive painting by Richard King hangs in Austin, Texas's Driscoll Hotel and carries a haunting legend with it. The girl in the photo is named Samantha Houston and was the daughter of a senator in Texas. Samantha's father brought her with him when he stayed at the Driscoll Hotel in 1887. This would be where Samantha fell down a flight of stairs while chasing after a bull and would fall to her death. After the tragic accident, Samantha's father hired the artist Richard Kind to paint a grand portrait of Samantha to commemorate her death. For unknown reason, Samantha's father never went to pick up the painting. Thus, after it was finished, the Driscoll Hotel purchased the painting for $10 and displayed it at the head of the grand staircase. The painting by Richard King would be hung in the hotel where she died and is known to have focused on the spirit's alleged activities. Since the accident, it is reported that her ghost haunts the Driscoll Hotel. It has been reported that a bouncing ball can often be seen in the hotel lobby. Additionally, there have been guest complaints that door handles beside the painting painting rattle, with guests also saying that Samantha's expression in the painting seems to distort as they look at it. In the painting, Samantha holds flowers and looks innocent, but it has been said by present day hotel staff and guests that if you stare at the painting long enough, her expression changes. Sometimes her mouth appears to widen into a full smile, and other times her face would contour. Not only that, but there have also been guest reports of feeling nauseous or a falling feeling around the painting, as if they too are tumbling down a set of stairs. In 19 in 1906, Samantha's mother donated separate portraits of herself and her husband to be hung together side by side with their daughter. Though the parents' painting kept falling off the wall for no apparent reason, having it be nailed to the wall. The parents' painting would be vandalized and slashed, leaving the hotel to have both paintings copied and hung without labels, with the fear that they would get vandalized again. Today, no one knows where the original paintings are. In at number four, we have the dead mother. Most famous for his painting titled The Scream, Edvard Munch is not new to dark and scary paintings. The 1800s painter is a fairly dark individual and was driven to insanity for his terrible upbringing. The Dead Mother is one of his most haunting art pieces. The painting is to honor Munch's mother who died of tuberculosis when Munch was a young boy. The painting reflects some of the angst, despair and insanity that Edvard went through growing up. These elements are used to form what can only be described as a truly disturbing painting to look at. The painting depicts a young girl with her back turned to a bed on which her dead mother lies as she holds her hands to her ears with a wide-eyed expression of disbelief. The emotions of frozen time, disbelief and trauma a child may have following a parent's death are expressed in this painting. And these emotions never left him as he experienced them firsthand. Some would say that contrary to the girl's distraught pose, the faraway look in the eyes show that she has already broken free from reality. It is as if she is trying to block out the stillness of the room or the news that her mother is gone forever. The little girl's eyes have been reported to follow viewers as they move around her and some people can even hear the sheets from the dead mother's bed rustling as they stand near the painting. The piece of art is now maintained at the Kunsthalle in Bremen, but the trauma and despair make the painting still haunting to look at today. At number three, we have Laura P's Haunted Painting. If this specific story of this haunting is true, it would be a huge bummer. It's kind of like if you bought a carton of eggs and you got home and all the eggs were broken and then there was also a ghost attached to the box. Laura P was a pretty well-established artist. She did many original works, and one of the things she was most famous for was recreating photographs as paintings. She would do this often, and there was one occasion where she painted a rustic scene with a wagon in the middle of what seemed like a farm. It was very, very beautiful, and the whole thing just melts your heart. She worked in a restaurant, and she brought it in, and everyone loved it. They were all like, we can't wait for the day where you leave this place and you move on to be a famous painter, and they decided to hang it. Well, it wasn't long after the painting was put up that she started to get some complaints from her colleagues. They kept saying that the painting must have not been hung right or that there was something wrong with the wire in the back because they kept having to move it straight. A couple weeks after that, someone said they saw the painting move all on its own. That's when everyone saw it. In the painting was an image of what seemed like a hanged man or a headless man. Laura then took the painting home because all the people she worked with were now a little freaked out and she didn't just want to throw the whole thing in the garbage, but that's when things started to get really strange. Laura said that in her home, her and her husband started to feel sudden cold 
spots. A few times she swears that the painting moved all on its own and the headless ghost in the painting would disappear. You see, this is the point in the horror movie where you throw the thing out or you leave it at a relative's house or something. And if it mysteriously ends up back in your house, then you're probably not gonna make it to the end of the movie. That's just how it works. But Laura pushed through these supernatural happenings and that is when she saw it. The ghost of the headless man walking through her home. And I'm really speeding through this story because we only have so much time. There was a ton of other things that happened, like a knock on her bedroom door, and there were things that were nailed to the wall that came flying off the wall, slamming on the ground. After all this wrapped up, Laura said that she still has never believed in ghosts, still doesn't believe in ghosts to this day, but if she could go back in time, she would have never painted the painting. There's a little bit of connection here, I've been turned a little bit. And number two is The Woman in Rain by Svetlana Taurus. It's hard enough to sell a painting just because people don't want it, and then you find out that it's haunted on top of that, you're just making it even more of a challenge to become a painter. The story behind this painting is very strange. Svetlana Taurus finished the whole piece in one sitting. She must have been in the zone, but in this case, it was a little bit different. It wasn't like the zone where Derek Jeter made the flip to Nab Giambi, which is one of the best moments in sports. But this was closer to being possessed. Svetlana said while she was painting the woman in rain, it felt like someone else was controlling her, like another being took over her faculties and created the whole painting. And who knows what the intention of this unknown force was. Well, it's probably a little jarring for her, but a girl's gotta eat, so Svetlana still had to sell the painting. Someone said they loved it, and then they took it home. Well, who knows? This unknown force seems to be very talented. But then just three days later the painting was returned by the person who bought it and they were begging for her to take it back like an ex-boyfriend. Apparently since this person took this piece home they felt uneasy like someone was watching them and then they started to have a feeling of anxiety. Also each morning when they woke up they were extremely depressed. So Svetlana just chalked this up as something weird then she just sold it to the next person who returned it with the same story and then this happened for a third time. Finally it was bought and put up by a salon owner who owns a salon in Kiev. People who come into the salon say the woman stares at them as they walk in and many people come back saying that they've been thinking about the woman ever since they left. And for the number one spot, we have Pogo the Clown by John Wayne Gacy. John Wayne Gacy is one of the most notorious serial killers in all of American history. He would brutally torture young men and boys before he killed them. Even with Gacy's handwritten map, it took the police weeks to recover all the bodies he had buried in the crawl space under his house. When the police investigated his home, they walked into the basement and they all nearly vomited from the smell of rotting bodies that were buried down there. There was even more bodies found in a river next to his home. In total, there was 33 victims attached to John Wayne Gacy. One of the creepiest things about this psycho is that he would dress up as a party clown. He would go to kids' parties dressed as a clown to be the entertainment. This is disturbing on several levels. It seems like in his downtime, he decided that he wanted to take a shot at making some art. He made a self-portrait of him as Pogo the Clown. And when you think about everything this man did, this piece is truly terrifying. Some people say that if you stare at the painting for too long, you can see his smile stretch as if his soul lives in the painting. All right, everyone, that has been our list. I hope you guys enjoyed all the content we made for you guys today. And now I'm going to throw to you guys a unanswered horror question. Something you guys can discuss in the comments and maybe as a team we can get to the bottom of this. I love creating these think tanks. They are so interesting. So here we go. What does Anna whisper to Mademoiselle at the end of the movie Martyrs? That movie has a very trippy ending and leaves you with a lot of questions. Coming in at number five, the portrait of Bernardo de Galvez. When the Galvez Hotel opened in the 1900s, they hung a portrait of Spanish military officer Bernardo de Galvez, after whom the hotel was named in the hallway. It is not actually known who painted the portrait or when it was painted, but it is believed it was commissioned by Bernardo himself. He was a Spanish military leader who fought for the American colonies during the Revolutionary War. He died in 1786, but according to Count countless observers, the portrait of him that hangs at the end of a downstairs hallway at Hotel Galvez is haunted by the man's ghost. Bernardo de Galvez died of an illness in Mexico City in November of 1786, only a few months after his 40th birthday. So how would his spirit have found its way to the Galvez Hotel? It could be possible that his spirit became attached to the painting and therefore was transported with it to the hotel. In life he was regarded as a hero for fighting for his country, but in death he seems to bring people fear while visiting the hotel. 
hotel. Soon after opening, the hotel guests started to report a cold, uneasy feeling when they passed the painting, as if they were passing right through a ghost. Others could feel the eyes of the painting following them around the room. This has even been captured by photographers. It is said that if you want to capture a picture of Bernardo de Galvez, you must first ask permission. If you do not, then your picture will come out blurry. Is his spirit just watching over the hotel, or maybe he has some unfinished business that he wants to resolve? Either way, I would not want to spend time around this painting. In at number 4, Man Proposes, God Disposes. <laughs> what a name. Man Proposes, God Disposes is an 1864 oil on canvas painting by Edwin Landseer. The painting depicts an imagined Arctic scene in the aftermath of Sir John Franklin's expedition in 1845 to explore the Northwest Passage. The 134 men of Franklin's expedition left Greenheath in May 1845 on two steam powered ironclad icebreakers. After five left the ship, the remaining 129 men were last seen by a whaling vessel in Lancaster Sound in July 1845, but then disappeared without trace into the ice. The expedition was well provisioned for a voyage of several years, but eventually search parties were sent out as time passed and no further sightings were made. In 1854, Inuit recounted tales of sightings in 1850 to Captain John Ray, and he found some dead bodies on King William Island. Ray also reported suspicions of cannibalism among the last survivors. Having been lost for five years, all of the provisions would have been long gone. In 1859, Francis Leopold McClintock published The Voyage of the Fox in the Arctic Seas, an account of his voyage on the fox in search of Franklin from 1857 to 1859, and his discovery of the remains of two crew from Erebus on King William Island, together with the ship's boat and other detritus. The painting is said to be inspired from a real life image of the discovered remains that brought back panic in the Canadian government. It is currently on display at Royal Holloway, University of London, where it has also been seen as cursed. The curse dates back to the 1920s. There was a student taking an exam in the hall where the painting is on display. The student was sat directly in front of the painting. During the exam, the student took two pencils and forced them into their eyes. They did not survive. When he was found, it was discovered he had written, the polar bears made me do it on their exam paper. This is believed to be in reference to the polar bears in the painting. Since then, it is believed anyone who sat in this spot during an exam has failed. Students will now refuse to sit in the space and the painting must be covered during every exam, otherwise the students will refuse to sit their exam. Could this painting painting make people mad, just like those lost at sea in 1850. We will never know for sure, but at least they keep the painting covered most of the time. Might keep it covered, just throw it away to be honest. Number 3 on this list is the stagecraft of the hanging man. This one is super weird and will make you want to double check all your photographs. The paranormal periodical says, a painter was at a gallery in 1994 where she discovered a unique photograph taken by James Kidd. It was meant to simply be a picture of an old stagecoach in a stagecoach stop in Arizona, but when he developed the photo, he discovered what seemed to be a headless man. Yeah, this was a ghost. Even Kodak investigated it and claimed the photo had not been doctored. The painter was drawn to it and asked if she could do an oil painting of the image. However, halfway through the painting, she began to feel, well, odd. It was at this point that the painting started doing some weird things. Objects in it would randomly move and things even in the office space where the painting was being made started acting up. The roof started leaking when it really shouldn't have it all. Things started moving around the room without warning. Just weird stuff and all while the painting itself was moving around. One day the headless man would be in one spot and the next time he would be in another one entirely. Apparently this is caught on the security footage from this building, but that's not something that we can easily access. I don't really understand why they kept painting this damn thing after it started doing what it was doing, because now we just have this headless dude from a painting terrorizing people in this office, as if the monotony of a 9 to 5 wasn't bad enough. Number 2 on this list is Love Letters. Now there are actually a few Love Letters paintings, and they're both haunted believe it or not. We're going to be specifically focusing in on the latter painting though, one that's been called Love Letters Replica. The paranormal periodical says, most haunted or cursed paintings have one thing in common, they're freaky. This replica of a Richard King work on the other hand would probably be credited as pretty. Unfortunately this piece of art lays claim to a rather more tragic tale. The origins of this painting is unknown and unlike other pictures it adopted its paranormal content 
connotations after it was painted. Legend has it the daughter of a US Senator, Samantha Houston, chased her ball down the grand stairs of the Drisco Hotel and died in 1887. The picture was supposedly hung up in her memory as it mirrored her features and her kind demeanor. But it wasn't soon after it made its debut in the hotel that guests and staff began to report feeling dizzy or nauseous around the painting. But some also said the painting had tried to communicate with them. The girl's face might change expression or she might be holding a ball instead of a bouquet of flowers. Those who have owned other replicas or prints of the painting also reported loved ones having strokes, a common link between those who had had the misfortune of bringing it into their homes. Yeah, so people literally have had this painting try to communicate with them before. That's really not what a painting should be doing, folks. I like my paintings completely still, without movement, and without the ability to mess with my freaking brain. Clearly something about paint put into this pattern to create this image just makes something haunted and creepy happen. Considering this is the replica of the original and the original is also haunted, maybe we should just stop painting pictures that look like this. And number one on this list is the rain woman. Not only does this painting move, but the woman in the painting will follow you anywhere you go. The paranormal periodical says it's one of the most peculiar and poignant paintings to feature, but the paranormal activity actually starts when the painter first set up the canvas. Svetlana Telitz, the artist behind the picture, claimed she painted it in less than five hours. Or did she? The Ukrainian painter alleges her hand was guided throughout the entire process and that she felt she was channeling a spirit that was looking over her. It's currently hung in a salon in Kiev and is often noted as exhibiting telltale signs of terrifying supernatural phenomena. The expression changes and angry emotions can often be seen glinting in her eyes. Those that made the mistake of buying it, a clear mistake as it frequently changed hands, often claimed they began to see the woman in the painting paintings everywhere. It gave people that looked at it or were in the same room as it headaches and a shadow began to wander the homes of those who owned it. According to paranormal experts, Telets might have been channeling surrealist automatism from which one lets the unconscious mind have control over their art. This is effectively spirit writing with a paintbrush and seems to have trapped an entity in the image. So it's no wonder this thing moves guys, it's literally alive. There's a spirit trap inside this painting and it's doing whatever the heck it wants. I don't know how this happened or what spirit this is, but clearly it doesn't want to go to the afterlife just yet and had to use this painting as its vessel. Number five on this list is the dead mother. There are so many things that we could have called this painting, but the artist decided to go with dead mother. Already off to a bad start if you ask me. The paranormal periodical says it's a pretty depressing picture. We see a young child standing next to her dead mother who lies on her deathbed. This traumatic piece of art is based on an even sadder story. Edvard Munch, the Norwegian artist behind the image, experienced the same circumstances shown in the painting at five years old when his mother died of TB. His works were always overshadowed by his childhood bereavement and morbid fear of inheriting a mental condition from his family, but it was this one that picked up an alleged curse. Those who view this image have reported feeling uncomfortable as if the eyes of the young girl are following you and heard the bed sheets even rustling in the painting. Munch isn't just known for this haunted painting however. He's also the brains behind The Scream, one of the most famous pieces of artwork which is haunting on a different level. This eyeball movement has been seen from tons of people before and apparently has been caught on camera. Now we don't have access to that footage but from my understanding it's not some off optical illusion. Like the Mona Lisa is often talked about as doing this and it's a bit of an optical illusion. But this painting very clearly has moved and its eyeballs are in a different place. Also, even if this was an optical illusion, there's no way to create the auditory effect of rustling sheets without someone actually moving. This painting is messed up and some paranormal expert needs to look into it fast. Number four on this list is Bernardo de Galvez. We have another painting here whose eyes follow 
following you, but there's also a bit of a twist involved. The Paranormal Periodical says this painting is housed in one of Texas's most haunted hotels, despite having its own terrifying reputation. The thing is, the supernatural goings on in this hotel can be traced back to the day the painting was first hung at the end of the downstairs hallway. This is a portrait of the Spanish military officer the hotel was named after, Bernardo Dugalvez. The guests immediately began to feel the eyes follow them as they walked across the hall and to their rooms. They also felt cold spots or a sense of uneasiness if they stood too close to it. The most chilling part of this story, however, is that no one is able to take a picture of the painting without it being blurred. To ask for a clear image, you must first ask for permission from Bernardo. So from my understanding, this has been caught on camera, but there's no way to know if what people are suggesting is real or not because the image is blurred and we can't see anything, making it rather difficult to know anything at all in relation to this painting. What is it about this painting? Why is it the way that it is? Apparently just having this moving haunted painting in the hotel has made it so that this hotel is super duper haunted now. But how is that possible? What could have possibly caused this painting to get this far gone where it blurs cameras and follows people around? We may never know why this painting is as scary as it is. In third place, we have a satanic idol. So this story began in 1991 when a deer hunter was walking through the woods in Connecticut close to where Ed and Lorraine resided. The hunter got lost and after some time stumbled upon a raised circular rock formation with the idol in question standing in the middle of it. It is believed that the formation was common with folks who practiced devil worship in the 70s. The hunter began to feel uncomfortable and left the area, deciding to make his way back to his car and along the way he noticed an elderly gentleman walking alongside him who was dressed head to toe in black. Now the man in black never spoke a single word to the deer hunter. The hunter was getting more nervous by the second and also more lost and unsure of his direction path. Desperate, he turned to the mysterious figure and simply asked, how do I get out of here? Luckily for our narrator, the man in black pointed in a direction and then disappeared. The hunter was so thrown off by that day that he reached out to Ed, who requested to be brought to the same area. The hunter wasn't 100% sure he could find the exact location, but was willing to try. Together, the men were able to stumble through the forest, and without the aid of the man in black this time, found the rock formation. Ed removed the demonic idol from the area and placed it at home in his museum, and that's when things got a little weirder. Because, you know, a man in black spotting and weird forest stuff isn't weird enough for us. Approximately three days after removing the idol, Lorraine collapsed for no known reason, and she was transported to the hospital where no one could identify what was wrong with her. Thankfully, after three more days, she recovered. Uh, red flag time! Threes and sixes are very popular numbers amongst the demonic scary people and things that you want to avoid. Ed believed that this was caused by the gentleman in black who was believed to have been a high priest in a satanic cult as a form of payback for removing the satanic idol. Now, this idol remains in the Warrens Museum to this day, and honestly, I think it looks like a paper mache masterpiece of an alien, but please let me know in the comments if anyone out there has a different opinion. Mm. In second place, we have a shadow doll. So among one of the first haunted items visible in the museum to visitors is a shadow doll, which boasts bird feathers and a genuine human tooth. Mm -mm. Unlike the other dolls included in the museum, I'd consider this creature more of a sculpture, Ergo, why she made her way to my list today. Also, she's just overall terrifying to look at. I'm calling it now. She better join the TV universe soon. So a shadow doll is a statue or deity of sorts that is made specifically for harm and to be used at the center of curses. I happen to know the steps for the most common curse, and while I'll leave out a step for safety, yes, I promise I'll elaborate. So the caster would first need to take a picture of the doll, write a curse on the back of the photo, and then send it to whomever the curse is aimed for. The person who receives the picture with the curse will sadly invite that curse into their lives. I'm thinking, oh, totally forgot. The doll will also appear in that person's dreams. While not too much is known about the origins of this specific doll, it was initially purchased in a vintage store under the assumption that it was, you know, simply an antique. I have a couple of antique dolls myself, and I'm shuddering to think about what they would do if activated by any kind of curse. They've already got enough of a personality. Thanks. In our first place, we have a copy of Crying Boy. So when Bob Smith was a young child in the 70s, he became fascinated by a painting in his grandmother's house. The painting was a cheap print of a well-known piece and was hung on the living room wall. The photo depicted a boy who was a similar age to Bob and for some reason looked sad and downcast with tears brimming from his troubled eyes. A few years after the painting went up on the wall, there was a devastating kitchen fire in the house. While the kitchen was destroyed, the rest of the house was 
undamaged. The painting was eventually sold in a garage sale to Ed Warren himself. For years it puzzled Bob why his grandmother got rid of the painting, until he read a series of articles about a cursed painting. Yep, that painting was… The Crying Boy. That's the title of the painting. The Crying Boy was one in a series of paintings by artist Giovanni Bregolin that was completed in the 1950s. The series depicted young, teary-eyed younglings. While it may seem strange to want an image of a weeping child on your wall, the pictures proved popular all over the world. For example, in the UK alone, over 50,000 copies were sold. The children represented were often poor and very beautiful. In total, Giovanni painted over 60 paintings, and up until the early 80s, prints and reprints of his images continued to be mass-produced. In 1985, the most popular tabloid newspaper in the United Kingdom printed a story that caused panic and ended the popularity of his work. The Sun published an article entitled Blazing Curse of the Crying Boy, describing the terrible experience of May and Ron Hall after their home was destroyed by fire. The cause of the fire, much like Bob's grandmother's, was a greasy pan that overheated and burst into flames. The fire spread rapidly and destroyed everything on the ground floor of the home. Only one item remained intact, print of the crying boy on their living room wall. Distraught at their loss, the devastated couple made the bizarre claim that the painting was cursed and it, not the pan, was the cause of the fire. Now, this tale probably would have disappeared into the archives of strange and mysterious stories, except for one, um, tiny thing. A firefighter claimed that he had attended at least 15 house fires where everything was destroyed except for Prince of the Crying Boy which would remain completely intact. So before long, this gathered momentum, and a rash of fires all over the world were blamed on the cursed child, not to be confused with the play that's currently running of the same name. In subsequent articles, the Sun went on to claim that a woman had lost her house to a fire six months after buying the painting, two sisters had fires in their homes after buying a copy of the painting, when one sister even claimed to have seen her painting sway backwards and forwards on the wall while it was happening, a concerned woman on the Isle of Wight attempted to burn her painting without success and then went on to suffer a run of very bad luck, a gentleman in Nottingham who possessed a print of the painting lost his home and his family was injured, a pizza parlor got destroyed, including every painting on their walls except for the crying boy, when the Sun reported that even rational firefighters refused to have a copy of this painting in their homes, the reputation of the crying boy was damned forever. In all these cases, and many more that were reported, paintings of the crying boy went unharmed. Eventually, there was an image of a crying child by any artist in a house that went on fire. Now, some folks claimed that they experienced bad luck if they attempted to destroy or even get rid of the paintings, while others were convinced that it was only a matter of time before disaster struck them. The Sun eventually offered the frightened public a solution. On Halloween night of 1985, hundreds of the paintings were collected together by the newspaper and burnt under the supervision of the fire brigade. So why would this seemingly innocent series of paintings be cursed? Theories ranged from the little boy being from a Romani family who placed a curse on the artist, to others claiming that the subject of the painting had died in a fire and his spirit was trapped in the art. The most enduring story claimed that the boy accidentally set fire to the studio of Giovanni Bregolin. Simply put, wherever the little orphan went, fires mysteriously followed earning him the name Diablo or Devil. 